Hi, thank you for watching the fifth edition of Validity's new two minutes to validation. We hope that you enjoy this new feature that we're bringing to you to provide information such as compliance updates, new services regarding employment screening and drug testing. Um, but we want to hear more about what you would like to know, um, what content is important for you each month and could be helpful to your policies, procedures, or just any day-to-day -day ideas. Um, each month we will present a compliance update via our compliance director and we hope you find that informative. It's obviously the most critical of what we were going to provide you, but if you have questions about drug testing, driving records, or even questions about the software, um, we will be more than happy to address any of those. So let us know what you think. We do provide other educational materials on our website. You will find a resources tab that lists a number of blogs on all kinds of different topics. In addition, we also publish news in an up-to-date format on our company LinkedIn site um, that you can find here below. So take a look at those things to help keep yourself informed versus all things employment screening and drug testing, and uh, keep it in mind to let us know what might be more helpful for you. Most importantly, on behalf of everybody here at Validity, we really appreciate your business and we appreciate your choosing us to be your employment screening partner. Thank you. I'm Summer Glenn, the Marketing Development Intern. I started at Validity four months ago just as my digital design class at Blue Valley Caps was finishing up for the semester. Now as the school year approaches again, I'll be a high school senior trying to find a college major that I can pursue as a full-time career. This summer internship has given me the opportunity to see what a job in the marketing field could be like. I've expanded on my graphic design skills and gained new ones by assisting with the other marketing roles here at Validity. I found that I definitely enjoy graphic design in the corporate world, which is something I'm very glad I confirmed before dedicating time and money to college. This internship has given me confidence in what my next step will be after high school. Recently, the EEOC guidance on the use of arrest and conviction records took a hit in a decision from the Fifth Circuit. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit upheld an injunction that barred the 2012 EEOC guidance on the use of arrest and conviction records to be used in Texas. This began in November of 2013 when the state of Texas sued the EEOC to challenge its guidance, claiming that the guidance, quote, constituted an unlawfully promulgated substantive rule and sought to enjoin its enforcement. Texas also asked for a declaration per the Declaratory Judgment Act that the state could lawfully exclude felons from state employment. The Fifth Circuit's opinion fell more solidly in favor of Texas and against the EEOC. After first ruling that the EEOC guidance constituted a final agency action open to judicial review and that Texas possessed standing to bring its case, the panel held that the guidance constituted a substantive rule and the EEOC had no right to issue the guidance at all. The EEOC and the Attorney General are permanently prohibited from enforcing the EEOC's interpretation of the guidance against Texas. While the Fifth Circuit's injunction applies only to Texas, this opinion may result in widespread legal challenges to the EEOC's guidance on the consideration of criminal records in employment decisions. Employers should take caution when developing a policy regarding the treatment of employees or applicants with criminal records. The applicability of the EEOC's guidance will likely be fluid for some time. However, other laws remain that must be carefully considered when reviewing the criminal background of an employee or applicant, most notably the Fair Credit Reporting Act and state ban-the-box laws. Now that's validation.